There we go. OK. So today I'm going to talk about the future of medicine and how wearables can have an impact on that. And to start, I want to share with you something amazing. I love my grandma. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's my grandma. That's me a really long time ago. Uh, you know, my grandma, she's awesome, partly because she always used to buy me the, my favorite toys, but more so because no one truly cares for you like your grandma does. That's true. Woo! <laughs> so as I've gotten older, our relationship has changed, and I'm starting to realize that I'm going to have to start taking care of her. Um, she, she has recently developed type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and a host of other chronic illnesses and it's critical that she receives better care from her doctors. Unfortunately, she's just one in the 90% of senior citizens who suffers from these illnesses. So one of the reasons I came here today is because this is a project I've been working on for about a year, and it's something I'm extremely passionate about. So Hexcare is a platform that aggregates data from patient smart devices. And as you may have seen, this is just a, a brief glance at all the different wearable smart devices that are coming out. There's, there's smart shoes, smart clothes, smart, any smart contact lenses. You could, if you can think of it, there's probably something out there. And so just to give a demonstration of, of the value of this information, so this is my activity data for the past year, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah. So, as you can see, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still trying. Um, over there, actually, I ran a marathon, which is interesting. Which marathon? But, but unfortunately, this is my weight, and you can see that that marathon didn't really do much for me. Um, so, but this information is critical to a doctor, so they can see this day by day and have a better understanding of how you're progressing. So what, what our platform does, again, is all those devices that are coming out, it brings it together into one spot where the patient can share it with their doctor so that way their doctor can see that information in an easy to understand way. So to see a basic example of, of why this is necessary, so this is my grandma's blood pressure for the past couple months. Okay, when she goes into the doctor, everything is typically okay. So she comes in every few months, takes a reading, this is what the doctor sees. He'll also ask her to write things down or remember things, and three months later, she's expected to come in and, and say something about it. But, you know, my grandma, being awesome, she's, she doesn't want to write things down. She wants to party and drink wine, okay? So this, this is obviously not the correct solution. But... Unfortunately for her, blood pressure is a silent killer. There, you, you don't have any symptoms, and you can't feel when you have high blood pressure. So even if she were to write this stuff down, she wouldn't be able to relay that information to her doctor. So there's actually, like I mentioned, there's a lot of devices coming out, and one of them is a blood pressure cuff. So this is what someone's blood pressure usually looks like outside of the office. Okay, so. Everything is not okay. There's peaks of high blood pressure, and in fact, during those peaks, the patient is three times more likely to die of a heart attack and four times more likely to die of a stroke. So I, I saw this, and I was like, I was, I was awestruck that doctors kind of aren't pushing for this information. So with all these devices coming out, I think it's bridging that gap. And so a recent study was done that shows that actually nine out of ten doctors are really interested in this whole wearable mobile health movement um, to get more information from their patients. And we're actually working with a doctor in Pasadena right now. He's using this with five of his patients to monitor weight, activity, blood pressure. And he's actually being able to interact more with his patients and help them achieve better health. And I think this is a great first step. I mean, there's a lot of companies doing stuff like this but to be able to go out there and get a doctor using this and already help his patients is something that I think is really exciting and that I think more people should be aware of and uh, you know, get doctors on board for this kind of stuff. So yeah, that's, that's, that's my talk. Um, that's our website. You can follow us on Twitter. 
and thank you. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, now's the time. She's great. She's great, yeah. She's been, I got her a, a blood pressure cuff and a blood oximeter, so she's been using it every day. <laughs> Sure. Um, so I think doctors, so we're, we're working more with private doctors right now because they have more time to spend with the patients. Ideally, long term, we would like to get into hospitals, but right now that's just a whole other beast and it's really hard to get the administration on board for such a large change. Um, so I think working with these private doctors will start that. Um, Sure, yeah, so blood pressure, blood glucose, blood oxygen, weight, exercise, your sleep information. And like I said, there's, in the future, there's going to be so many of these devices coming out. Like Google's doing some smart contact lens. There's people doing like sleep masks that monitor your brain waves. And all this information is going to be extremely valuable if presented in the correct way. How old is she? My, oh, she's 80. I'll, I'll have to bring it here next time. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So the question was, how do we kind of extend this to the lower income population who maybe can't afford this stuff or don't have access to doctors. So these devices now, you're right, are pretty expensive. Like some of these I have on are like a couple hundred dollars each. Um, but there are companies, there's an Asian company working on a band that's really similar to Fitbit that's only $20. Um, and it does pretty much the same thing. So I think in the future, these things are going to be a lot cheaper, a lot more accessible. Um, you know, Google's working on the, the Loon project, which means internet will be available virtually anywhere. So these people who are in rural, rural areas and don't have, you know, don't have access to doctors can still use this technology. Um, and I, I'd imagine maybe other doctors or volunteers could look through this information and, and, you know, reach out to them if they need help. And the children, yeah, so, so another thing we're, we're doing this summer, we're working with the Children's Hospital. Um, there's a, a big problem with, uh, with children is obesity, and uh, especially in Los Angeles, there's a lot of low-income in families. Um, so we're doing a, a research study with 120 kids this summer to, uh, to help, help them lose weight. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Sure. So yeah, any there's a lot of devices coming out. So any device that we essentially integrate with. So if you have a Fitbit or a Jawbone, you can go into our platform, authenticate with that device, and then just share it with your doctor. And then as I'm moving around, it'll automatically just sync to your doctor. So if I take a blood pressure reading, he sees that immediately. Right. Stuff like that. And is that free? Yes, for patients. Yeah. So if you had a if you have a device or a Misfit or something. You can just go on and it's completely free and you can look at all your information. How do you, how do you get your money? Sure. So currently we're asking the doctors to include it into their current care plans. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Any issues with like a HIPAA or any regulatory? Yeah. So we're, we're HIPAA compliant. We have dedicated servers. We have HTTPS, all that, all that good stuff. Um, it is, a, aside from that though, it is a little tricky in this space because there's, these devices are, are kind of consumer devices, so there's questions like, do these need to be HIPAA compliant? Does our platform need to be FDA approved? Um, so we're, we're covering all our bases, but those are definitely questions that are asked in this area. So can I just say, I think you're going to save lives. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Sure. So, yeah, I'm, I'm big on acronyms or whatever you want to call it. So the question is, what does HEX or HEXCARE stand for? So HEX or hexagon is a six-sided object, and it kind of represents, you know, your five senses, but HEXCARE is kind of like that sixth, sixth sense that brings all, all of your senses together and provides you some sort of insight into that. And then dot care was just they released a bunch of cool domain names, and I was like, I gotta get that one. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> Sure. Currently, we're not. We're just kind of a. Uh, and repeat the question. Sure. So the question is, a lot of offices or medical institutions have kind of a, a rope that the patients can pull if something's going wrong or if they fall down, they can push a button. So currently, we're not focusing on that because then that gets um, into more liability. Um, I, I do imagine, though, all these all these devices are gathering such valuable data that you could predict those things from happening or in real time, you can see those things happening and just automatically alert someone if something's going wrong. If I have the device to tell me this, how can I get that data to you? Or is it on your list? Or if I want to show you that data, what can happen with it? Sure, so the question is if you don't have a device that syncs with our. Like if you don't have a device that syncs with our platform? Sure. Um, we, we try and integrate with the most popular platforms, so like Apple Watch, Fitbit, Jawbone, Withings, all those things. Um, I'm really open to, to uh, as much data as possible as long as it provides the doctor and patient with some sort of value. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Oh yes, yeah. Oh, this is my co-founder, Bianca, right there. So she's, she's awesome. Um, yeah, we do have manual entry. So if you feel a headache or a chest pain or you're doing meditation or something, you can easily log that. Um, we're building an Apple Watch app, so you can just like tap it if you had a, have a headache or something. And then your doctor can see all that information and, and provide you with better care. Yeah, so we haven't built it out yet, but you could easily export all of your data to your own computer if you wanted to. Um, so, like, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, the question was, do we plan to be subscription-based in the future? Um, so right now, yeah, for the doctors, it's a subscription basis. So they, they would pay per month per patient. Um, I see this being just like the other lady pointed out, giving access to anyone is something that I think is necessary. So anybody can sync their data and look at it if they want for free. Um, but yes, in terms of the doctors, it would be a subscription basis. Yes. So, because in the end, people are not going to be dying and needing critical care because of you've got them handled. Right. I mean, That's, yeah, there's the. Game. Sure. So, I mean, yeah, medicine right now is mostly reactive. So, if something happens to you, you go to the doctor, and sometimes it's, it's too late. But the future of medicine is going to be preventative. So, doctors or algorithms can look at all this information and predict, you know, maybe, maybe in five years you're going to be a type 2 diabetic. And if you make these changes now, you can stop yourself from getting to that point. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a great point. I mean, medicine is going that direction. Once you get insurance on board, they may give you lower rates for the insurance. Right, yeah. I mean, some, I think some insurance companies are even thinking about you know, prescribing these devices to people. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Cool.
Okay, cool. Yeah, if you have any other questions, just come find me. So, cool. Thank you.